Hello Guardians, it is Ibantis here, and this is going to be a weekly reset video, Forsaken style. So it is technically September 5th when I'm recording this, but been up for a while, so pretty much just a continuation of launch day. But I do want to cover quite a few things with you guys, some will be spoilery, I'll try and make a distinction between those, and some will be kind of your general weekly reset stuff, just a few pointers about those. So let's start with those. I'm not going to show the milestones tab because mine is, for one, fairly empty, and two, it's got a little bit of spoiler stuff in there. But as you go through, the biggest thing some of you guys are wondering about all the new supers that come with Forsaken. Whatever class you're running with, the first super that you unlock is of your choice. And the way you're basically going to do that, once you kick off the story, you're going to talk to Zavala and Ikora, get some things going, and you're going to see some, quote, visions of light on the ground. And you're going to need to pick up quite a few of those. I don't know if it's 100, 200, pretty good amount. And they look like little light blue glowing, almost look like, you know, kind of a curved feather shape. You know, they're small, they're thin, they're kind of curved. You'll see them on the ground, they're kind of all over the place as you're killing enemies, doing public events, things like that. So, look for those. I found most of those on the new destination, The Tangled Shore. Won't go into too much of that for pre-spoiler stuff unless you want to just see it all yourself. But that's how you get your new super, so look for those. Once you do that, there's a mission you go do. It's going to be on a different planet, and you've got some stuff to do, some stuff to listen to, and you get to pick your new super at the end of that. So, that being said, new supers are there, but I only know how to get one of them. So I don't know what the time delay is going to be for the other two, if there is one, or if it comes another part as you unlock things, I'm not sure. But as of right now, your new first new super comes fairly quickly early on if you decide to do so. So, keep that in mind, figure out which one for your class you want. They all have their perks and benefits to them, they all seem very cool. Again, it's total preference. But as for the rest of the non-spoiler stuff, let's cover your, what I would consider the old weekly reset milestones. So, first, your flashpoint is the European Dead Zone on Earth. A couple things you guys may notice, you have your strikes that you can straight up choose from the director. You've got Lake of Shadows, now that PlayStation exclusive that is out here for us to pick from as well as PC and Xbox people. But if you're on PlayStation, you've been playing this for a while. A very Taken-filled um, strike. Now, your Flashpoint will actually be with Devrim K. So what you're going to need to do is actually you can track him. So just as you would track an adventurer so you know how to get to it, you can actually click on Devrim K's icon. And as you're working through your Flashpoint progress, all you have to do is hit Tab bring up your ghost and you can actually see your progress on the flashpoint without having to bring up your map which is cool I kind of like this change so not for everybody some people love having everything in the blade but just actually being able to be in game and see different things in action I'm kind of a fan of that one especially for at least the flashpoint for sure I do like this change one piece of advice though heads up for spoiler coming three two one the soft cap if you don't want to know it tune out now but if you do the soft cap is 500 power level. Now, the way you're going to get to 500 power level, I'll try not to show too much gear, but this is some new stuff, but I'll try not to show too many perks yet. As you level up in the campaign, you're going to go from 30 to 50 in your actual character level up here. As you level up, you're going to keep getting things at higher and higher level. When I was, you know, around 40, I was getting things, you know, around that 450 level or so. It, You know, maybe if it was 5 power level for loot, whatever it was, as you level up your character levels, you're going to get higher and higher drops. When you get to 50, your blues are going to stop dropping any higher. I see your blues from anything. Public events, chests, you know, high value targets, whatever it is you're doing, any blue items that drop, be it armor or weapons, are going to stop being beneficial at 500. So that is where your powerful gear is going to start taking you past that. With that being said... Things like your Flashpoint, anything that gets you powerful gear, I would save that turn in until you are ready. Because with some grinding and things like that, you're going to hit 500 just by doing stuff, activities, public events, bounties, all that type of stuff is going to get you leveled up in time. So as long as you're going to do this first grind pretty quick, I would see about trying to turn this thing in before the four-day reset. Now they say a four-day reset, which is potentially going to be... We think Saturday if it's four days, but maybe it could be Friday. If it's four days, the cadence is going to get really funky, so some of my reset videos will be off. We'll see how that stuff goes in the future. But at least within the next three days, if you're going to grind out at least to see if you can get to 500 power level, you know, turn in your flashpoint once you get there. Same thing with anything else that says specifically 
powerful gear. If you are going to, you know, not be around as much, turn this thing in before you stop playing for the next three or four days and at least get a little boost in your light level so when you come back you're closer to that max. But again, if you are going to grind it out, save any powerful gear turn-ins that you can until you hit 500 so you get as much of a power level boost from all those powerful gear as you can. Now, some other things have changed. They have pulled out of the milestones tab. Those are going to be things like your Vanguard. This is going to be all new stuff. You've got your daily heroic story missions. So, challenge for your daily heroic story missions. You have a weekly challenge. Complete a daily heroic story mission. Powerful gear will come from this. You have to complete three of them. Nice thing is you have three to pick from, or actually five. Um, so there are going to be some new ones that you do, some old ones. Uh, depending on what campaign it's attached to, the light level will be kind of accordingly. As of the modifiers, at least starting for launch day, you have a Void Singe for the first week. Uh, we have Grounded for day one and Heavyweight for day one. Heavyweight will therefore be on the basically four-day reset. Actually, three-day reset. So, still curious how that's all going to go. But Heavyweight will be Tuesday launch. Not Wednesday, not Thursday, but also Friday. Not Saturday, not Sunday, but also Monday. So, three times during this, you know, Tuesday to Tuesday reset, you're going to have that Heavyweight modifier. It's a good time to do some missions, some strikes, some heroic adventures, because that heavyweight melts some bosses, depending on whatever you're using. Pump out some damage, find a void grenade launcher with, like, rally barricade or luna faction boots. Stuff dies real, real fast, so enjoy the heavyweight modifier whilst you can. Now, again, you can pick, but you just have to do three during your weekly reset. Now, this says weekly. I don't know if the weekly is considered the full seven day, like the raid reset, or the four day, which is going to be for certain things. Still waiting for details. Sorry, I'm a little vague on that, but I'm waiting like you guys are. Your Vanguard Strikes, again, will have the same modifiers. They will match your other activities that have their set modifiers. Daily Story Missions, Heroic Adventures, and Strikes all match. So, when you do Strikes, as you level up, you're going to have different playlists. You're going to have a level 300, level 400, level 500. These are going to be based on your power level. 500 won't unlock until you're relatively close to it. I thought the 400 was supposed to go away once I was 40 power levels above it, but it's still here, so I have my options to play with my friends. So that's a good thing as well. Maybe they're going to keep that one there because they decided ditching the 400 as you're going to help some friends out might be a little extreme. Uh, but you're going to get a random strike. You've got quite a few more to choose from, which is nice as well. For the Nightfall, you have two powerful gear options. One... Complete a Nightfall Strike, get some powerful gear. Cool. Two, complete a Nightfall Strike with a team score above 100,000. Now, when you do your Nightfall, you can pick your challenge card. You can pick your modifiers, just as you did previously. Heads up, there could be some spoiler stuff in here. So if you don't want to see my inventory, turn away now. But if you're going to look at the inventory and you're going to go find your challenge card in your consumables, got to find it. Five of Swords. So you got to pick your Power Cap Multiplier, your Singe your buff and your debuffs depending on what your challenge is going for. Now, there are certain things to doing higher strike, you know, modifiers so you get more points. I'll cover that stuff later. Sorry guys, this will be a long video. There is a lot to cover. But Nightfall gives you options, which is nice. Now you guys see the difficulty here. 540. I could technically try it right now at 500. I would probably get fairly whooped. Um, soloing this thing at 540 is going to be rough. Maybe if I can get up to 510, I might try it. I'm sure Esoteric will have it done tomorrow. That guy is a beast. Shout out, Esso. Still crushing it. But your options, it seems, for the week are going to be a Garden World. So you've got your Osiris Strike. You've got the Arms Dealer, the good old starter. And then the Warden of Nothing, which is one of the new strikes where you kind of deal with the Prison of Elders. It's a cool strike. It's pretty fun. Actually, one of the enjoyable ones for me. So far, it's only one of the two new strikes that I've done. So, haven't seen them all, but this first one, really, really cool. Definitely enjoy it. So, two different powerful engrams coming from this one. One by completing it, one for that score. Definitely giving you incentive to work on that score as you work on your powerful gear. Weekly resets here as well, so keep that in mind. That pretty much covers your Vanguard and strikes. Next, we go to your Crucible. Now, in here, your weekly challenge is complete Crucible matches. You've got five of them. So instead of the call to arms, which is going to be, you know, basically get kills in Crucible, which ended up being, I don't know, 100 total kills roughly, complete five matches, you get powerful gear. Now that can be quick play, that can be rumble. 
Rumble has changed as well. If you finish in the top three, it will count as a win. So, you know, Valor and stuff will be adjusted accordingly with that. Valor has reset for the season as well. Um, doubles is your playlist for the week. So you've got that as an option. And Competitive is here as well. Now, Competitive has added in crew, uh, Clash and also Control. Still 4v4, still probably very sweaty. Level advantages are disabled. When Iron Banner returns later in September, Iron um, level advantages will be enabled. So being as high as possible will help. Trials is on hiatus for now, so don't expect that one to be coming back anytime soon. Also, you've got Gambit. You're going to see complete Gambit matches, three of them. You're going to get powerful gear for this weekly reset. It's a lot of fun, but even if you don't win, at least finish three matches, so stick it in there. Don't quit. They have the quitter penalties in there. Uh, they're going to have autofill matchmaking in there, but don't quit. You're going to have the quitter penalties. Stick it out and at least play your three matches solid. Now, before I go too much farther into spoilers or anything else, heads up, we're going to go into the Traveler, see what the vendors have to offer and things like that. So, let's head on in. I'll see you guys on the inside. Alright, Guardians, so we are here at Test. She has changed. She brought back the Prismatic Matrix. Heads up, if you don't want to see anything, you want to look for yourself. I won't go through every little thing for the Bright Engrams, but the Prismatic Matrix this week has a new poultry petting emote. Shout out to um, no one in particular. Trying to stay on spoilery. It's also got the lethal system. It's a hard light ornament. Looks fairly cool. Got your cloaks and glass items. You've got a potential dance. It's doing its thing there. Kind of crazy. And some other things as well. Um, you know, ghosts, sparrows, the warm up. Make sure you stretch it out. Get kind of loose, shake everything out. You've also got your ghost projections. These give a little symbol above it. So just ways to customize your ghost as well. Uh, for your bright engrams, I'm not going to go through everything. You guys can look in here if you want to, but there are Eververse bounties. Again, now you're going to have some Eververse bounty notes from doing different things. Um, I've got one right now, so I could pick up, say, this bounty right here. Vex defeated 30, Void kills 15. I'm going to get 20 bright dust for it. It's not a ton of bright dust, but it's a way for you to earn some bright dust over time just by doing things throughout the week. Some are easier to get than others, or if you save up more bounty notes, then you can actually get um, things that are worth three, and there's one that's worth six. Obviously, the higher the tier, the more Bryce dust that you're going to get. But for her inventory, we've got the Accidental Dance. Looking pretty fancy there. And the Grooving Dance. Getting down with it. Getting those hips action going. Got a couple sparrows, got a couple ships and ghosts, and you've got your greaves, it looks, for the week. Dragonfire regalia, they look fairly cool, at least for the titan. You've got your colony ornament, sneak attack, so go in camo a little bit. And your sub-zero cold heart ornament returns. You've also got a couple transmat effects, couple shaders, and your boons. So, big thing about Eververse, the prismatic matrix returns. You will be getting your uh, prismatic facet, one per week. So you can save these up. It looks like one of one. I thought it was one of three that you could hold. Maybe I'll get more. Maybe I won't. Maybe you just have to use one per week. We'll have to test that theory. But definitely make sure you check out your bounties. Now we do have some vendor rolls to go check out. So let's move over to a couple of these guys here. So here at Zavala, make sure you pick up the bounties. They are no longer just strike specific as they were for a little while. We've got defeat multiple enemies with your super. I've already completed it. Complete a daily heroic story mission. Cool, not too hard. And you'll get tokens from these. They have a one day after purchase, so I don't know if they reset every day. Kind of have a feeling they might. Uh, some are within strikes. Defeat enemies in strike with shotguns. If you got a shotgun, take it in, blow stuff up. You know, pretty quick and easy, 25 enemies. And void kills in a strike as well. Pick your weapon of choice. Shoot some stuff. Now down here, we're going to have pursuits. These are your nightfall ranks. Now the way you get your nightfall rank is based on personal high scores set in different strikes. So the higher your scores across more Nightfalls, it seems like the higher your rank is going to be. So if there are three different Nightfalls for a week and you get a high score in them, we're going to have to see what level that gets us, depending on our strike um, you know, options here. But I'm going to have to test that one out and see. But that is how you're going to be able to get some different items from him. So requires rank, Nightfall rank 1. You can actually have to get a decently high score in one of them for sure to see what that does. Now, Red Nightfall Rank 10 is going to get you a new Nameless Midnight. It's going to get you Explosive Payload, Moving Target. You've got Tactical Mag or Steady Rounds. And then three different scopes. Going to get it at Tier 1. 
base level. It's going to have a mod slot, shader, pretty basic stuff. But you've also got a full tier 10 masterwork shotgun. Shout out to Fallout Plays. He already put a video up about this thing. He's looking for it to be uh, pretty powerful between the range boost that you get on the masterwork already, the high impact. You've got full auto on this thing as it is. Aggressive frame, so hard hitting, high recoil, and full auto. Kind of a crazy combo there. You've got moving target, which is okay. But you've got full choke, which is going to help tighten your package. Uh, smooth bore, something you do want to avoid. Assault mag and tactical mag. Definitely, you know, reload speed, magazine size, things like that. But you've also got your tracker disabled. You're going to be able to put an extra mod in there once you get this thing set up. So... This is definitely one if you somehow, I don't know if we can even get to Nightfall rank 14 and how long this thing is going to be around. It could just be his weapon here for Nightfall ranks for, you know, season 4. you have to see how long it takes to stands around. Vanguard rank 1, as you turn in your packages, it takes 20 for Vanguard and Crucible. You can get your, you know, earning 10 ranks in season 4. You get your Vanguard Divide Shader, which if you go full on out, Hope you like baby blue, white, and a little bit of orange. And then also your Vanguard Terminus, earning 25 ranks in Season 4. This is going to be showing your Nightfall rank based on your high scores, but it's a different emblem. This is Nightfall rank 1. This is your Vanguard Terminus. Definitely saying you put in a lot of work working the Nightfalls, getting a lot of tokens. Definitely spend some time in there. Over here on number 2, just your standard boon of the Vanguard. But uh, getting Nightfall scores is going to be high, but make sure before you jump in to really do anything for your week, grab these bounties all the time, basically, whenever you log in. Jump into the tower, get your bounties, get some tokens as much as you can to get your level up, get a little extra glimmer. All good things. Make sure you have bounties on you, basically, all the time for whatever activity you're doing. Let's go over to Shax and check his stuff out. Alright, so here with Mr. Crucible, we've got the bounties for him as well. If you're going to go shoot some people in Crucible, again, pick up your bounties. Now, Pursuits. This is going to be Reach Valor Rank Fabled, so I think that's level 3. And Reach Valor Link Ret Rank Legend, so you're going to have to get a full Valor Rank to get this better, better Devils, per se. Wing Discipline. This one is going to come with Hand Cannon Targeting. Surprise, surprise, this is going to pair decently with Better Devils. Fusion Rifle Reserves and Sniper Rifle Reserves. This one also has Remote Connection. Gain Bonus Super Energy on Sniper Rifle Kills. If you're a Sniper... Both Sniper Rifle Reserves and Sniper Rifle Kills Super Energy. These are really sweet combos. And heads up, the Masterwork for Armor now has a Solar Damage, Arc Damage, or Void Damage Resistance as well. So this is a new thing. I'm not sure how you choose it if it just comes as the drop that you're going to get and then you can level it up. So I'm not sure how you pick it, but yeah, there's damage types as well. So... You're going to have mods that go in here, you're going to have damage type resistance, and you're going to have your perk rolls. Armor is going to have a lot of options to it, which I think is honestly really, really cool. The Better Better Devils, this one is pretty solid. So, still similar stuff here, just from before. Accurized rounds or extended mag. But you've got Rangefinder. Aiming this weapon increases its effective range and zoom, increased projectile velocity while aiming rocket launchers and grenade launchers. So that's actually just a general rangefinder perk. But again, aiming it increases its range and zoom. And also you've got kill clip. Reloading after kill grants increased damage. So this one doesn't have explosive rounds, which hopefully got fixed on especially the PC version. Or rampage, but kill clip, still not bad. Pretty reasonable gun to have as a hand cannon for your, you know, kinetic slot. So there's some cool stuff to earn here as you get your Valor ranks up. When it comes to the rest of the stuff over here, this is mostly the same as you get... You know, different ranks and things like that. Boons are still here. Down here for your seasonal. Triumph Season 4 Armor Required. Reveal in your power. Apply the shader to your gear to tell the tale of your Crucible Triumphs. If the shader is applied to an item, and then the item is dismantled, the shader will be returned to your inventory. So it's a pretty valuable shader. Once you get uh, Season 4 Armor, I guess you're going to have to get all of the Season 4 Armor. You're going to get that Crucible Solemnity. And the Damage Incorporated. Season 4 Valor... Legend required. So you're going to have to get to Valor Legend rank. Probably a full, maybe reset as well. This emblem tracks the number of Fight Me medals you've earned in the Crucible. Have to see what that one's all about. Uh, got one more vendor to check. So let's jump over there real quick. 
Okay, for the gunsmith, he has been somewhat simplified. Your mod components that you broke all your legendary and rare mods down, by the way. Break them all down. Any old ones from year one don't matter. Your mod components, you're going to be buying these mods from Banshee two at a time. And you can also turn in your gunsmith rewards 100 per package to try and get some new stuff. And just to show you guys turning in what 100 looks like for when it takes a little while. And as you guys can tell, the 500 cap is on here for legendaries as well. So I got a new kinetic hand cannon. It's there and it's done. Got a new shader and those are all finished. Now down here, it takes 10 mod components to buy one mod. So these are not going to be cheap. You're definitely going to have to watch what you get. See what your rolls you get from weapons and armor as well. Sometimes they might have some good mods. You can break the gun down and get the mod out of it. But grants increased recovery. So this is going to give you a boost to recovery. And Radar Tuner for your weapon mod grants immediately radar immediately returns when you stop aiming down sights. It's a really quick pick back up on that radar, so if you're peeking in and out of like scouts, looking down lanes, this is probably one that's going to be really nice in PvP for that awareness. So he's pretty simplified for now. He does have a quest that you're going to jump on. I won't spoil that one. That will be something to cover later on. But mods, this is your man form. Check out Banshee. There's more to look at. Follow me. Alright Guardians, once you come over into the bazaar, and you're about where I'm standing in front of this rug, turn to the right, come over here, slide under this garage gate, and we will find the Drifter, the Gambit Vendor. So, I don't know why I said Vendor that way. He will have his bounties as well, so make sure you pick these up before you go into um, Gambit. Make sure you pick these up. Sending blockers, defeat enemies, complete match, and send one of each type of blocker. He's also his, got his pursuits based on your infamy rank. So same as before, he's got a mark with invigoration and hand cannon reserves. So you've got invigoration, reduces melee cooldown each time you pick up an orb of light, which is cool. I love that type of stuff for picking up orbs. Replenishes health each time you pick up an orb of light. This is one of like, I want on like all my gear. I love getting health back for picking up orbs. Glad they brought this one back from D1. Hand cannon reserves or heavy ammo finder, your choice. But you can see this one has a tier 1 arc damage resistance. For your gun, by guns, this pulse rifle looks like it's going to be pretty solid. It honestly looks like kind of an M1 Garand from like World War II, but a little bit updated. So you've got adaptive frame, well-rounded. You've got arrowhead break or corkscrew rifling, increased range and stability, increases handling speed. I would probably run with this one, I think. More of a balanced route, you know. Great. Greatly controls recoil, increased handling speed. I guess feel it out. I'm not entirely sure until I get my hands on it. But you've got extended mag or flared magwell. So big reload speed, but a drop in the magazine. 48 bullets is a lot of trigger pulls out of a 3 pulse. Both kill clip and full auto on a pulse rifle. This is kind of going to be a pretty cool gun. So definitely one to work for. Going to take infamy rank 12. It's going to take infamy rank 6. Now once you get your infamy to your max rank, don't know what it is. One reset will get you this mysterious invitation. I don't know if this is how you actually start exotic quests and things like that. Possibly could be. I'm not there yet. And then also your enigmatic package when you reset your infamy twice. This will be a whole different thing as well. Reset your infamy three times. You're going to get the furtive shell. Pretty much just the gambit shell. A couple random mods. Nothing too crazy, but just a cosmetic. You've got your cold wind blown. Earned by completing a gambit triumph during season four. And your Gambit Suede Shader requires Triumph Field Medic. So, Triumphs are a new thing as well. I won't delve into all those right now. You can check out all your Triumphs and stuff that you've got. Some of them you may do pretty easily. Click on them, activate them. I've only done it to one thing. Let's go see if there's any more vendors you guys need to see about. And then I'll wrap this one up. And then do a Forsaken video separately for more spoiler content. We do have Hawthorne. She's actually got clan bounties. So doing missions, things like that are going to get you your clan EXP. But to give it a little bit of boost as well, you're going to have some clan bounties that you're going to be able to do. So I've already finished this one. Defeat enemies with the solar damage anywhere in the solar system. Defeat guardians with melee attacks and crucible. And defeat guardians with arc damage in the crucible. So these are your daily bounties. Come over here and pick them up. Again, you're going to want to jump in the tower pretty much every day you log in, get your bounties, so whatever you're going to be doing, you can at least get some stuff acquired, some bounties, help out your clan, all this type of stuff. And none of the bounties are very expensive, they're like 
you know, 250 glimmer. Once you reach level 50, you are going to unlock your weekly bounties, which are going to give you more clan EXP, some legendary gear, um, and some of these will require specific things. Assist or land final blows with clan mates in the Crucible. Crucible final blows with clan mates. So you got to play with a clan person. Clear waves of escalation protocol with clan mates. Three waves cleared. Going to be higher light level, so hopefully this stuff gets a little bit easier. And complete gambit, mat gambit matches with clan mates. So these are going to give you 1,250. Your dailies are going to give you 700. These are a little bigger boost. I feel like the weekly should be, I don't know, 2,000, a slightly bigger boost. Maybe they're just trying to give you more to work on during the week. These just seem a little bit harder for not that big a boost versus doing your dailies. But again, pick up all your bounties. You never quite know when you're going to knock them out, especially if you're playing with your clan. So bounties, bounties, bounties. Pick them up all the time. Make sure you're doing stuff no matter what you're doing. All right, Guardians, that pretty much wraps up what the vendors have for the weekly reset. So without me going too far into spoilers for Forsaken content and other, th other things I will cover in a separate video, uh, kind of give you the guys the first week or so or at least get a different video, um, that'll pretty much wrap it up. So I know this was a longer video, but I wanted to cover some of the changes, things you sh guys should be looking for, and a little bit of advice for the soft cap, when to turn in the powerful gear and things like that. So if you did enjoy this video, leave a like below. Also, if you want to continue to enjoy my content, hit that subscribe button and that alert bell. I will keep a lot of Forsaken content coming to you guys. Lots to cover, lots of things to look at doing, and lots of things to explore. So, you guys can follow me on twitch.tv slash ebontis, twitter.com ebontis, and right here on YouTube. Thank you guys for everything. Leave a comment below. Say hey. Um, if you guys want to see certain things out of these weekly resets, let me know. I've got a couple more ideas for future, just trying not to spoil too much in this first video. So thank you guys for tuning in. Have a great one, and thank you for sticking to the end. Uh, I know this was a long one. Sorry, they hopefully will be a little bit shorter in the future. Have a great one. I'll see you all soon.